The defense is wrong. Are you sure? I'm positive. How could you be so sure? Because there is no way that these tire marks were made by a 64 Buick Skylark. These marks were made by a 1963 Pontiac Tempest. Objection, Your Honor. Can we clarify to the court whether the witness is stating opinion or fact? This is your opinion? It's a fact. I find it hard to believe that this kind of information could be ascertained simply by looking at a picture. Would you like me to explain? I would love to hear this. So would I. <laughs> the car that made these two equal length tire marks had pause attraction. Can't make those marks without pause attraction, which was not available on the 64 Buick Skylark. And why not? What is pause attraction? It's a limited slip differential which distributes power equally to both the right and left tires. The 64 Skylark had a regular differential, which anyone who's been stuck in the mud in Alabama knows you step on the gas, one tire spins, the other tire does nothing. That's right. Is that it? No, there's more. You see, when the left tire mark goes up on the curve and the right tire mark stays flat and even, well, the 64 Skylark had a solid rear axle. So, when the left tire would go up on the curb, the right tire would tilt out and ride along its edge. But that didn't happen here. The tire marks stayed flat and even. This car had an independent rear suspension. Now, in the 60s, there were only two other cars made in America that had positive traction and independent rear suspension and enough power to make these marks. One was the Corvette, which could never be confused with the Buick Skylark. The other had the same body length, height, width, weight, wheelbase, and wheel track as the 64 Skylark, and that was the 1963 Pontiac Tempest. And because both cars were made by GM, were both cars available in metallic mint green paint? They were. Thank you, Ms. Vito. <laughs> No more questions. Thank you very, very much. You've been a lovely, lovely witness.